Hello everybody. Um, uh, today in this video we're gonna talk about a new uh, topic. We covered it before, um, but in this video we're gonna go into more details, um, which is finding roots of algebraic equations. Um, so in previous video we showed how to um, use the options in Excel, which are goal seeking solver, to get the roots or get the solution to uh, algebraic equations um, by iterations um, and actually in these videos or in these uh, tools you you don't do anything other than just um, making the uh, equations written in the right uh, manner and making sure that everything is okay and the tools which is called Seek and Solver will do everything for you um, and actually um, this will be enough for uh, a lot of people uh, but I got a question. Uh, I got a good question from uh, Mahdi DV, uh, who was asking if there is a way to show the iterations that the um, Excel do, uh, which is the goal, goal seeking solver. Um, so he can make a table of each iteration and how many iterations he did, and so on and so forth. So this was a very good question, and actually um, the solution to this is. Uh, can we do that? Is yes, we can. Um, and then comes the next question: is how? Um, and then we have to talk a little bit about this. So uh, I had to go back and search in my undergrad uh, math textbooks, and actually I found a good book that was uh, suggested by a friend of mine, which is the Numerical Solutions or the Numerical Methods for Engineers. It's a very, very good book, and I, I really advise anybody who is uh, looking for some textbook to uh, discuss stuff about uh, numerical methods uh, for whatever uh, field of engineering uh, to see this book and read it. And actually, all the um, uh, content of the this video and the next videos will be taken from this book. So it's it's a really really good one. Um, so um, before we start, there are a couple of points that are very very important to keep in mind while uh, talking about this uh, um, solution of algebraic equations. Um, so for for us as engineers, we are not looking at equations as just equations. We uh, use the equations to describe physical phenomena that happen in nature and we need to uh, convert this phenomena into equations so we can predict something or use the, um, the equations to design some machine or whatever so the roots or the solution to these equations have to have some physical meaning to us it's not just you have the equation you solve it and the number you get is something that you can use it, it, it's not always the case um, and in, in, in general the, um, the equations will start as simple equations and um, the simple equations usually or in, in most cases do not describe the system or the phenomena uh, accurately so you have to um, or people do more complicated equations and make it more uh, describing to the phenomena and then you will have more and more uh, terms and powers and whatever in the in this equation uh, which in a lot of cases results in more roots or more solutions to the same equations the point that I'm really really interested in making clear is that not all the mathematical roots have physical meaning which means that you are making the equation complicated just to make sure it's uh, describing the system well but this doesn't mean that the extra roots that come up during uh, or during this uh, modification to the equation or because the equation is getting more complicated these more roots do not have any physical meaning and in some cases you'll have some imaginary roots you'll have some crazy roots this doesn't mean that they're real they're just roots because you have a complex equation there is one root or two roots that might be right but the rest of the roots will not be okay one very very famous case is the equations of a state it's known that the simplest case is the ideal gas, which is PV equals NRT, um, or if you use the V as a specific volume, which is liter per mole, as in this equation, uh, in this um, uh, graph, then you'll have PV equals RT, so you have P is inversely proportional to V at constant temperature, of course. So this is the relation that you'll expect when you have a uh, an ideal gas, um, which is 
uh, 1 over v um, which is this kind of equation uh, but in case of Van der Waals equation which is not the, the most complex equation there are way more complicated equations than Van der Waals you'll have some similar um, behavior at this part of the um, uh, values of v however in the values below 0.12 you will have this crazy thing which is at the top it's okay you'll have some variation because of the difference in the equations and you'll have more accurate results here uh, presumably uh, but this part is doesn't have any meaning you have volume and at this volume you have pressure which is negative which doesn't have any meaning and if you see here you'll have at, at any point here you'll have a pressure that has two volumes which which doesn't have any meaning you you have the same system you have the same pressure and you have the same temperature then you have only one volume there is no meaning that you have a pressure and two volumes at the same pressure so <coughs> this part of the equation is just mathematical part it doesn't have any physical meaning the physical meaning will appear here so the take home message of this is that you have to study your problem well and to know which the solution of the solution has a physical meaning and which is the mathemat mathematical solution so this is something that has to be very very clear before we start solving the equations so now we can talk about mathematics um, so the way we see the equation it's very important to make this clear before we start um, so the way we see equations is as like any simple or not simple equation any equation you have you have a left hand side and right hand side so you can write the left hand side as an f of x and the right hand side as a g of x so the f of x will be a x squared plus b x plus c and the g of x is sine x so uh, the root is simply the intersection of these two functions if you plot these two um, uh, functions um, against x then you will have two equations that intersect at one point this intersection is the solution to these two equations Either you can have one or two or three or infinite number of intersections it doesn't have any problem it doesn't, it doesn't have any anything wrong uh, but this is the solution um, another example uh, is this equation which is very very famous to have something equals to zero in this case the same thing applies you will have the left hand side equals uh, f of x and the g of x will be zero which is the x axis and usually when the the right hand side is zero then the solutions are called the roots um, but in, if, if, if it's not zero then you call it just um, an intersection or the solution to the equation so so the root is, is the, the solution to the equation when the uh, right hand side is zero when it intersects with the x-axis um, so uh, one way that people used to use long time ago to solve equations is by graphical solution as we just mentioned you have two equations you plot this and this and then in this case you have two points of intersection which is negative one and three um, which you can do analytically or uh, by any any way it's gonna be like x plus three or x minus three multiplied by x minus one or x plus one um, you'll have these two uh, brackets and each one of them will, will be equal to zero then you have two roots um, so this is very simple and straightforward but usually this is not the case in the actual uh, equations you'll have uh, an equation that have difficult or, or not not um, uh, integral solutions and then you'll have to have uh, a solution that's very accurate to know how many decimal places you have to get and so on and so forth so um, the graphical solution will give you an estimation in most of cases but it's not going to give you the exact solution and that's why we go to the numerical solution um, and as you do more iterations you have higher accuracy and you spend more time so it's going to trade off uh, it depends on what you um, uh, what you want and what you uh, have of time or whatever but thanks to excel and other uh, software you can do this um, by by uh, writing a code or doing something as we'll see in the next few videos and the methods that we are going to discuss to do the numerical solutions are um, categorized into two main categories <coughs> 
I'm sorry. Um, the first category is the bracketing methods, which means that you have two points and you get the point or the the, um, the value of x or the root um, as a function of these two, depending on the these two values that you have. <coughs> so the main two, or not the main two, the, the two uh, um, methods that we're going to discuss in the few videos um, is the bisection method and the false position method. Um, the other category is what's called the open methods. Open methods only require one assumption, uh, one point, and then based on this point you assume another point and so on and so forth till you reach the solution. So. Um, uh, you have to uh, assume just one point that doesn't need two points as the previous one um, in this case we will have two methods it's the simple fixed point method and the Newton of the method um, of course each one of them have like pros and cons and, and we're, we're gonna discuss in the um, next two videos the, the each one of them in detail um, so the approach to all these solutions is to assume a value of x uh, and recalculate it and repeat the step like um, uh, use the calculated value to, to as an assumption and then recalculate and then so on and so forth till you reach uh, the solution and because you, you're not gonna reach the, the exact solution uh, if you do like infinite number of unless you do infinite number of uh, iterations so we will, we will um, put a criteria which is called the approximate percent, percent relative error which is uh, a value that you're calculating from the uh, old and the new uh, assumed values and just to tell if this is accurate enough or not so the um, the epsilon a will be calculated from the new assumed value minus the old assumed value which is kind of calculating the the error uh, when you um, divide this by the new value and then multiply it by 100 so it's a percent and as this percent gets lower you're getting closer to the uh, accurate solution um, and then this means that you're convert converging the, the solution is converging and you're getting closer to the solution um, so um, this will be a good way to compare the different methods that we're using and how fast it converges and how fast it reaches the uh, solution uh, after how many uh, iterations so in the next videos we're gonna discuss in details the four methods um, and the approach of the solution and how we do this and um, the advantage and disadvantage of each of them and when you can use them and when they're gonna be time-consuming and when to um, decide that you're gonna use the bracket methods or the open methods whatever um, and of course to show how to apply them in Excel and how to use the Excel sheet to build your own um, iteration, iterative solution sheet and to make that table um, that we were thinking about, talking about in the beginning where you show each iteration and uh, what's the value of this iteration. Um, so till now um, this is what we're gonna do and in the next videos we're gonna start these um, approaches and so on. So I'll see you then. Goodbye.